Welcome to Viral Recaps. Today I'm going to explain a horror and thriller movie called The Last House on the Left from 2009. Spoilers incoming. Let's get right into it. The movie opens with two police officers taking a man to rot in jail. We don't get many details, but apparently, the man's name is Krug and he's well known and very dangerous. Once they stop to let the train pass, a pickup truck hits them out of nowhere. It turns out to be Francis, his brother, as well as Sadie, his girlfriend. She shoots the driver dead while Krug's busy choking the officer on the passenger side with his seatbelt. He shows the policeman a picture of his family, saying that's the last time he'll ever see them and finishes him off. Then, the scene switches and we're taken into another car with a lovely family heading to their village near the lake where they plan to spend the weekend. John is a surgeon, his wife Emma is a typical housewife and their daughter, Marie, is a gold medalist in swimming. When they arrive, Marie asks her parents to stay in the guest house by herself and they agree. Once she settles, she goes to the garage to look at her brother's boat, which brings her back some memories. Unfortunately, he passed out recently and the whole family is still trying to get over it. Marie then goes for a swim in the lake and after that, she takes a shower and puts on the necklace her brother gifted her. Then, she heads downstairs and asks if she could take the car and sleep over at a friend's house. Emma's a bit hesitant, but John gives her some and tells her to go have some fun. A few moments later, Marie arrives at the store where her friend, Paige, is working as a cashier. They talk for a while and Paige suggests they smoke some weed later. At first, Marie refuses, but then, a customer named Justin says he heard their conversation and offers to give them some top-notch weed. The girls agree and head over to his motel. They smoke together and get to know each other. Later on, they have fun playing makeover. They think that Justin's very cute, but he needs to change his shady style a bit. Unfortunately though, the party's over when Krug, Jason, and Sadie arrive at the motel. It turns out that Krug is Jason's father. He's shocked as they weren't supposed to come back today. They're mad at him for bringing the girls to the motel because their faces were caught on camera the previous night and now they're all over the newspapers and the news. There was a newspaper on the front door and now they think that the girls know what they did and might snitch their location to the police if they let them go. Without too much hesitation, they take a decision they should murder them. Paige panics and rushes into the bathroom. She tries to break the window and escape, but she couldn't. A few moments later, Frances breaks inside and smashes her head into the sink, causing her to pass out. Then, they take them into Marie's car and head over to the woods. Fortunately, they get very close to her parents' house and she sees this as an opportunity. She uses the car lighter to burn Sadie's face and cause chaos. This results in Krug losing control of the SUV, causing them to crash. The Chevy hits two trees on its way down and then finally stops at the third. They all come out of the car slowly, one by one. Francis has a badly broken nose and Sadie's scar will most likely stay there forever. Paige sees an opportunity and runs away. She almost manages to save herself, but unfortunately, Francis and Sadie catch her on time. Once they get her back, Krug stabs her multiple times and she dies shortly after. Then, he tries to force his own son into raping Marie. He refuses, so Krug does it instead. After he's done, she sees an opportunity to run away. Marie hits Krug with a rock and jumps into the lake. She swims as fast as she can and almost manages to get out of sight, but then a bullet hits her in the back, leaving her helplessly floating in the water. Then, they hurry to find shelter as a storm appears. Meanwhile, Marie's parents are having dinner. Emma is worried and she shares her thoughts with her husband. She thinks that Marie's too young for a sleepover, but John tells her not to stress over it too much and that everything will be just fine. Suddenly, they hear banging on their front door. It turns out it's Krug and his group. What a fucking coincidence. They say they were in a car accident and ask for help. Marie's parents agree and John treats Francis's broken nose while Emma makes Justin a cup of hot chocolate. In the next scene, we're thrown back into the river, where it turns out that Marie somehow managed to survive and she just got to the shore. Coming back to the house, her parents offer Krug and his group to stay in their guest house for the night as the storm rages outside and there are no taxis in the woods. Of course, they happily accept the offer. Before they head over to the guest house, Justin goes to the kitchen to sip some water. 
He sees Marie's picture on the fridge and he's terrified upon discovering that John and Emma are her parents. This makes him feel sick and he rushes to the bathroom to puke. He stays there for a while and looks at Marie's necklace. It fell off while Krug was raping her and Justin took it. Once he comes out of the bathroom, he leaves the necklace wrapped around the glass he used in order to warn John and Emma what happened to their daughter and who did it. Once the group retrieves to the guest house, a few moments later, just before John locks the front door, he hears banging coming from the porch. When he goes outside with Emma, they're both horrified to find Marie there, severely wounded. She has finally managed to crawl back home after swimming all the way back through the river. They quickly take her inside and John does his best to stabilize her. He heats up a knife on the fireplace in order to burn her wound and stop the bleeding. After that, as Marie has trouble breathing, he cuts a tiny hole in her back and inserts a small pipe inside her lung. He's then completely heartbroken to find out she was raped. Meanwhile, Emma found the necklace and quickly realized who did all of this. She tells John and they're both so infuriated that they start to plan on how to take revenge. They want to kill everyone and then use their boat to reach the city. While John searching for the keys in the garage, Francis surprises Emma from behind. She's worried that he'll see Marie and then kill them both, so she flirts with him as a distraction. Unfortunately, he still notices her laying wounded on the couch, so Emma hits him with a bottle and then stabs him with a knife. He tries to fight back, but John appears and hits him with a hammer. Then, he breaks his freshly stitched up nose again. They proceed to drown him in the sink and John turns on the garbage disposal unit. It sucks his fingers in and Francis screams in horrifying pain while his hand is getting crushed. John then finishes him off by sticking the hammer inside his brain. Then, they head over to the guest house to kill the rest of the group and they find Justin sitting on the bedroom's floor and holding Krug's gun. He wants to hand it over to John as he couldn't manage to kill his own father, but he still wants him dead for everything he made him do and witness throughout his life. Once the gun clicks, Krug and Sadie instantly wake up. John fires a couple of shots, but only manages to scratch Sadie's neck with one of them. Krug jumps out of the window to save his ass not giving a fuck about anyone else. Sadie tries to put up a fight against them, but ends up with a bullet straight into her forehead. In the meantime, Krug finds his brother's lifeless body in the kitchen. Once he hears John coming inside to kill him, he hides on the second floor. They play hide and seek for a while and Krug tells John about how he raped his daughter in details. When John finally finds him, they engage in a brutal fight. Unfortunately though, Krug has the advantage and sends John flying through the stairway. Just before he finishes him off, Justin appears from behind and holds his father at gunpoint. Once again, he couldn't gather the courage to shoot and his own father stabs him instead. Just before Krug stabs him again, Emma hits him from behind, leaving him unconscious. In the final scene, Krug wakes up paralyzed on a table. John heavily sedated him. Then, he puts his head inside a microwave and literally fries his brain until it pops out. Hey, if you enjoyed this recap, please consider subscribing and leaving a like as it helps the channel a lot. Thanks for watching and take care.